guys, it's Robin, RS Island Crafts. This is Talk To Me Tuesday for Tuesday, January 30th, 2018. I don't know about you guys, but this week has flown by. January's been a pretty slow month, but all of a sudden, zoom, it's Tuesday again. Well, welcome to my craft room. I'm trying to get back into the swing of doing my knitted dishcloths, having at least one done every week. This is just a basic cream colored one. It's still using the grandmother's favorite. I do mine with no holes because I don't like the holes and I don't like the way you have to decrease it when you're going back the other way. I just always forget parts of it. So I just do the no hole method and it works out really great. If you follow me on YouTube, you'll see that I made a whole bunch of little triangle thread catchers from, from a pattern from Primitive, Primitive Gatherings. I'll put up a little video after I'm done talking that gives you a little bit of a close-up of everything that I've worked on so you can see it better. But yeah, I made a whole bunch of these. And talking to everyone on YouTube, we decided that these aren't actually thread catchers, that they're much better as little candy dishes. They'd be great for a little swap. You just have this nice little, it's about a four inch triangle on one side, and you just fill it up with candies. But I have one on my desk that I use as a thread catcher, and it's really good because it's just this tiny thing. You can fold it up and put it in a project bag, keep it in your purse, in your car. I have two trash cans in my sewing room within, probably within like two feet from each other, but one by my sewing machine, one by the cutting table. And then over there by the desk, I have nothing. So just one of these little ones works great for me. And da 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 da, I finished my first Rare Bear. Hee <laughs> hee. Now, of course, this is only the skin because they prefer that you don't stuff them. And actually, it's easier to ship this way because. You know, a stuffed bear takes up a lot of space in a box and you can only fit a couple in. This way you can put several in an envelope and you're good. There's his little back end. I was jumping up and down doing other things while I was sewing this guy. Um, you know, some housework and some taking care of animals and stuff and dinners and all that. But he took me a few hours to make. I'm sure as I get making them, they'll get faster and I'll find the little tips and tricks because you always have to stop. I was watching Rob Appel's video, then I was reading the directions off my phone and going back and forth and stitching it as I go. So now that I know the basic process and what piece goes where, the next ones will go really quick. Plus then I can do a little bit of chain sewing because several of the parts you do before you put it together so you can just sew a bunch of them at the same time. And then the other thing I worked on is this little wall hanging. I'll explain it more in the video after the video. But this is a this was a gift that I won off of a blog from my friend Barb at Bejeweled Quilts. She put these, she did an accordion fold of the fabric and put it on her go cutter. But unfortunately she had this one piece set just wrong. I believe with the go cutter it has um, small, medium, and large hearts. And when she was cutting out the medium, part of the large or the small or whatever, also it started going through and it made some little um, cuts into here. But she, but since it cut through the actual fabric and she showed us by putting a scissors right through it, I'll put a link down below so you can see her blog post. She was really sad and depressed, but I told her I'd take it and I'd fix it and I'd make it all pretty and hang it up on my mini wall. If you go to her blog, um, Barb is a uh, Islands Batik ambassador, and this is Island Islands Batik fabric. It's really, really pretty. I've always been a big fan of batiks. I really love the colors, and I love that they're, they're you know that model that they're not perfect. Batiks have all the different colors, all mixed, all the different shades mixed together. So I think what I, I really want to start working with more batiks and kind of easing out of a lot of different, like I have a lot of eye spying kids fabrics. I like to get out of a lot of those and start switching over to the more grown up batiks. Granted you can use them for kids too, but I think of them as more of a grown up item. I have no idea what project I'll be working on next week because we're getting into February. So we'll have the new numbers coming up for our UFO, for our years of UFO. So we'll see. It's going to be a surprise. I'm hoping it's something fun to work on, but based on the 12 I pulled out, it should be pretty fun. Oh, the other thing I did this week is this is my scrap bin. As I'm cutting things on my table, I just throw all my scraps in here. Now I hadn't emptied this. This was pretty full and smashed down. I hadn't emptied it since maybe Thanksgiving. 
So yesterday, it was kind of a free day for me, so I just went ahead and I ironed what I needed to. I sliced everything up and put it in my little storage containers, kept some of the larger pieces, so now I get to fill it up again. Just a quick little overview so we can see these things a little bit closer. The dishcloth I finished this week. These are the little thread catchers, the triangle thread thread catchers, which are more like candy dishes. And then I finished my first rare bear. Look at him in all his glory. And then his little itty bitty rare feet. Aren't they sweet? Here's a closer picture of the hearts from Barb. And then right here you can see where it overlapped on the goat cutter and chopped it a little. And then it just repeats around in a few different spots. So it's a little bit, you can see the white fabric underneath. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to put there because I don't want to actually quilt on the hearts. But I have fusible underneath, so it's going to stop it from fraying. So I might just, I don't know, maybe I'll make a little heart of uh, beads on there. Or I'll just let it be as it is. It's going to be a wall hanging for me, so it's not like it's going to get washed a lot. And if something happens to it, I can always fix it myself because, you know, I made it. I probably could have tried to squish them together a little bit more when I put them down for the fusible. But it's fine. I'm really not worried about it. Because from a distance, it's not really noticeable. Even if I bring you in a little bit closer, you still can't see it. It's on the top part, and the one on the right, and the one on the left, and the one on the bottom. So basically, it's between every pair of hearts, the two on the top, two on the bottom, two on the left, two on the right. It is fine. I love that little star flower thing that it makes in the center, though. I love it. Barb made it. Barb gave it to me, and I love it. So I hope everyone's having fun crafting this week, and I hope everyone's staying really healthy with this flu that's going around. And I hope your weather is better than mine, because I have all these big curls going on today, because it is windy, windy, windy here. I think we're getting another cold front coming through in the next couple days, so it makes it a little crazy. Well, me and Mr. Bear say bye! We'll see you next week!